نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم ما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم قل یا ایها الكافرون لا اعبد ما تعبدون ولا انتم عابدون ما اعبد ولا انا عابد ما عبدتم ولا انتم عابدون ما اعبد لكم دينكم ولي دين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد صدق الله العظيم respected and honorable elders brothers mothers sisters and little ones assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh as this blessed month is passing us by very quickly let us make note that the first ashara of this blessed month is of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second ashara is of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the third freedom from the fire of hell let us understand this much that we should not lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless of whatever sin we have done Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful that he is willing to forgive all our sins even if our sins were to reach the skies if we make sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Quran states ya ayyuhalladhina amanu tubu ila Allah tawbatan nasuha we make sincere tawbah and what is sincere tawbah that one we refrain from the sin straight away we stop the sin Two, we have remorse over the sin that we have done. And three, we make a firm intention that as of this day, I will try my utmost mess, best not to commit this sin again. And if by chance it's committed again, again we follow the same routine and we ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it's to do with the right of the people, then the first three conditions, with the added fourth, and we go and ask forgiveness of the person that we have harmed or whose rights we have transgressed this is sincere toba not making toba but in our heart yeah i'm going to go do this again this is not toba this is making a mockery this is making a mockery of it and really we are making a joke of ourselves it's our loss it does not harm allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one bit but in this ashara let us not lose hope in the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that throughout this blessed month for forgiveness so nobody feel that i have committed so much sin that i am unable to be forgiven the quran states kul ya ibadi alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah inna allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a to all those people who have transgressed upon themselves by committing sin la taqnatu min rahmatillah do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is ready to forgive us he just wants an excuse one small excuse and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to forgive us there are many stories that we can open and see on how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just wants an excuse to forgive us just finding an excuse to forgive us and repent and turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at the story of the saint called bishr hafi rahmatullah alayhi bishr hafi was back in the days he would drink and he would recite such beautiful poetry And in this drunken state 
he would make his way and he would entertain the people with this beautiful poetry of his. On one occasion, whilst he was leaving his house, he seen a piece of paper with the name of Allah or some verses of the Quran on it. And whilst he was drunk, he lifted and picked up this paper. He took it home realizing that this is the name of Allah or the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He took it home, he cleaned it. He beautified it. Applied some itar on it and put it respectfully in a high place. Remember, a drunken person doesn't really have control over himself. But in this state, he found this paper of Allah, of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the verses of the Quran on it. He took this and he showed it great respect. After showing it great respect, he placed it in a high place and he continued with his normal daily routine in entertaining the people with his poetry. That very night he seen in his dream and he was told that O Bishri Hafi, turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make sincere repentance, make sincere repentance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you from his dear ones. Allah will make you from his dear ones. Bishri Hafi, there and then, he asked forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that night. And he, in turn, later became a great saint. Asked forgiveness, made sincere tawbah, and he became a great saint of his time. Like this, the story of Kifl from the Bani Israel comes to mind, to the effect that Kifl, in those days, whatever sin you committed, it was written on your door. That you committed this sin, this sin, this sin, this sin. And for entertainment purposes, people used to go read and see what sin he has committed today. On one occasion, a practicing, believing woman, she was in such a desperate situation to feed her children that she came to Kifl and she said, that I need some money and I've got nothing else and I want to feed my children and I offer myself to you. Kifal paid her and now when Kifal is ready to commit, to make, commit this sin, this woman begins to cry. And Kifal turns to this woman and says, I did not force you, you came on your own accord. I haven't forced you. You came on your own accord. She started crying and saying, I have never committed this sin. I am majboor. This is why I have resulted into saying yes to this. But I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in regards to this. this. These words were enough for Kifal. Who was committing sin by day and by night. But from the sincerity of this woman, this was enough to shake his heart. And he said to this woman, leave, move from here and off you go. Take the money as well, it's yours and go. I don't want to see you again. And she left. Kifal that night made sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Made sincere tawbah to Allah. A person who has committed sin by day and sin by night. Major sins. But he made sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by chance, his death was written that night. He died that very night. And on his door was written that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgift, forgiven Kifal. So my respected listeners, let us not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. And let us turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed month. Continuing with the blessed seerah, as always. Mention a few 
words in Urdu and thereafter our main bayan in English inshallah. Kal Sirati Mubarakah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam me hamme suna ke mushikin e makka ne Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam se behuda sawalat shuru ki hai aur kabhi keh rahe te ke in paharo ko sar sabz kar do ya asman se koi frishta aap ke saath kyun nahi utra jo aap ki tasdeeq karta ke aap allah ke nabi hai naauzubillah ya aap hamari tarah khana kyun khate hain hamari tarah chalte kyun hain aur sab logon mein se naauzubillah allah ne sirf aapko ek nabi banaya hame kyun nahi chuna aapko kyun chuna aur isi tarah behuda sawalat karte rahe aur farmaish karte rahe आखिरकार मुशरकी ने मक्का तंग आकर उलमाए यहूद के पास गए और उन्होंने उनको तीन सवाल आते दिए एक के असहाब कहफ के बारे में दूसरा रूह के बारे में तीसरा उस बादशाह के बारे में जो मशरक और मगरब तक सफ़र किया तो मशरकिन मक् वापस आकर बड़े खुश थे और आकर रसूल सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम से ये जो सवालत उलमाए यहूद ने दी थी रसूल आसम से सवालत करने लगे और ये तीनों सवालत रसूल आसम को पेश किए रसूल सलाम ने उनको जवाब दिया कि कल मैं इसका जवाब दे दूंगा और उस वक्त रसूल सलाम ने इन नहीं कहा तो कल आया कोई वही अल्लाह की तरफ से नहीं आई और इसी तरह चंद रोज गुजर गए और अल्लाह की तरफ से वही नहीं थी और मुशरकी ने मक्का मजाक उड़ाते रहे कि देखो जवाब ने रसूल आसम के पास नहीं है नाउज़बिल्ला और इसलिए जवाब नहीं दे रहे और इसके बाद जब्राईलातम आए और रसूल सल्लम को इन सवाल का जवाब दिया और रसूल सल्लम ने फिर मुशकिन मक् को इन सवाल का जवाब दे दिया फिर भी मुशरकिन मक् बाज ना आए इसी तरह लगातार जो लोग मुसलमान थे उनको तकलीफ देते रहे साथ में नाउज़बिल्ला रसूल सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम को भी तकलीफ बराबर देते रहे और एक दिन का वाक़ था कि रसूल सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम बाहर चलते रहे और अबू जहल सामने से आ रहा था और उसने रसूल सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम को बहुत गालियां नाउज़बिल्ला दी और बहुत सख्त अल्फाज इस्तेमाल किए उस वक्त किसी ने ये अल्फाज सुन लिए और जाकर सैदना हमजा रदी अल्लाह तन को आगा किया इसके बारे में सैदना हमजा रदी अल्लाह तुस्से में आकर सैदना हमजा रदी अल्लाह तुस्से में आकर उसने जाकर हजरत अबू उसने जा हमजा रदी अल्लाह ताकर अबू जहल को उसके सर में मारा और उसका सर भी जख्मी हुआ और कहने लगे खबरदार कि आइंदा मेरे के खबरदार के आइंदा रसूल सल्लम के ऐसे कोई अल्फाज आपने इस्तेमाल किए मैं भी मैंने भी उसका दीन कबूल किया मैंने भी उसका दीन कबूल किया खबरदार के आइंदा मैंने कभी सुना 
کہ آپ نے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو اس سخت الفاظ کے ساتھ دوبارہ رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو خطاب کیا جو ابو جہل کے ساتھی تھے کھڑے ہوئے مگر ابو جہل نے ان کو بیٹھنے کے لیے کہا اور اس انداز میں حضرت حمزہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ گھر گئے دل میں کچھ تردد ہوئی شیطان نے کوئی وسوسے ڈالے کہ یہ تو نے کیا کر دیا تو نے آبا و اجداد کا دین چھوڑ کر رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا دین لے لیا تو ایک دو دن کے بعد سخت پریشان تھے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے پاس آئے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے حضرت حمزہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ کے لیے دعا کی اور حضرت حمزہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ کے دل میں تسلی پیدا ہوئی اور اسی طرح سیدنا حمزہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ مشرف با اسلام ہوئے اس کے بعد آئندہ ان اللہ اللہ نے زندگی دی تو مزید آگے بات کریں گے ان شاء اللہ کنٹینیو میں دا بلس سیرا اب رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دا مشرقین اب مکہ کنٹینیوڈ پرسیکیوٹنگ دا بلیورز اینڈ افیکٹنگ پین آن دا بلیورز اینڈ ہارمنگ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سو مچ سو دا آن ون اکیجن واس دا پروفی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم was near the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the mushrikeen of Mecca Abu Jahl and his boys tried to strangle Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tried to beat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much so that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nearly fainted someone went to inform Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an the great friend of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an, on hearing this comes rushing to the aid of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After rushing to the aid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says to the people and the mushikeen of Makkah, are you going to kill somebody just because He says, Allah is one. Don't ascribe partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He believes in Allah as one. You're going to kill somebody just because of this? And suddenly they all turned around and started beating Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and hitting, punching, hitting their shoes on his head. So much so that Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala was bleeding from his head and he fell unconscious. It was not until the people of his tribe had seen this and they came to the aid of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala unconscious has been brought home mother worried and seeing the state of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala she is crying at the bedside of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala the prominent people from the tribe of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala are around Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala waiting for Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala to regain consciousness look at the words on the lips of Sayyidina Abu Bakr These words are suitable to be written in gold. Look at his love for Allah and his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah. Abu Bakr Ta'ala regains consciousness. After regaining consciousness, he sees his mother his people of his tribe around him and they say oh Abu Bakr let us know who did this we will go and avenge you we will take revenge for you how dare they do this to you we will take revenge for you Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala not paying any attention to them the words on his lips are how is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa how is Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa how is Rasulullah These are the words on the lips of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. The people looking at Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and say, We are here to avenge you and you ask about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They became disheartened and they left. The mother consoling her son says, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is fine. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is He says to his mom, I will not rest, I will not eat, and I will not drink until I see the Prophet ﷺ with my own eyes. 
and see that he's fell and, uh, well and fine. Until I see him with my own eyes, I will not accept anything and I will not eat or drink or rest until I see that the Prophet ﷺ is fit and fine. The mother, now seeing the state of her son, she melts in front of her son and she takes the Abu Bakr ta'ala an towards the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an on seeing the blessed face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he falls and hugs the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and cries at seeing that the Prophet sallallahu is fit and well. Only then this brought consolation to the heart of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an. On seeing the Prophet sallallahu was fit, fine and well. But the mushrikeen of Makkah still didn't stop. They still didn't stop in trying to hurt the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. On one occasion, Abu Jahl was walking the streets. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was by chance in that same area. And Abu Jahl came by and he passed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he exchanged some very hard and severe words to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Such words that he has never used before, he used such hard and awful words to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abdullah bin Juz'an, slave girl, she heard Abu Jahl exchange these harsh words to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the slave girl of Abdullah bin Juz'an went and seen Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala and the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He had just returned with his bow and arrow from hunting. And she had explained the whole scenario and situation to Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala. Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala and now boiling with anger. He goes out and sets forth in finding Abu Jahl. He sees Abu Jahl sitting around the Hatim with his boys laughing and joking. He comes and he takes his bow and smacks it in the head of Abu Jahl, causing a cut in the head of Abu Jahl and causing it to bleed. Everyone stands up and tries to grab Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala an. Abu Jahl says, let him be. For today, I have used some very harsh words against his nephew. Let him be today. Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala an, he says to Abu Jahl, how dare you use such words to my nephew? How dare you use such words to my nephew? I have accepted the deen of my nephew and the the deen of my nephew is the true deen, deen and, and I will aid my nephew inside this deen. The people said, Oh Hamza, have you turned and left the deen of your forefathers? Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala ignored them and made his way home. Now Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala in his home, shaitan starts to put these waswasas, doubts inside the mind of Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala an. Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala an. Now, unable to sleep, unable to rest, he's become restless of the thoughts and doubts in his mind and his heart. After a few days of this restlessness, he comes to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he informs Rasulullah of this restlessness. The Prophet makes dua for Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala an. And Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala an in this manner had accepted Islam and became a great support for Rasulullah and for the Muslims. Now, on seeing this, the mushrikeen of Makkah have become very disturbed, thinking, now how can we, now how can we try to stop 
prominent people from our clan and people are accepting the call of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And this made them very parishan. So they went to the scholars of the Jewish scholars and they may ask them for help. They asked them for help whilst they sent a couple of their boys to go and ask the scholars of Yahud on how Na'uzu Billah they can get one over the Muslims and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Meanwhile, in Makkah al Mukarramah, the Mushrikeen of Makkah continued with their persecutions of the believing Muslims and trying to persecute the Prophet. Any opportunity they had, they would try to hurt the Prophet or make a mockery of the Prophet or the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een na'udhu billah Nadar bin Haris when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would try to preach Islam Nadar bin Haris he would get women to come and dance around and shout and clap this is when the verses of Surah Luqman were revealed وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهْوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُدِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمِ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ آيَةٍ These verses were revealed. Like this, Aas bin Wa'il would make a mockery of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam na'uzu billah by saying the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was abtar. Meaning that he had no male offspring, i.e. the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's children, male children had died of and passed away in their infancy. And they would be believe that your lineage continues from your sons. Your family lineage continues from your son. So they would make a mockery of Rasulullah by saying that you have no sons, your lineage has finished. This is the mockery they would make. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these verses of Surah Kawthar were revealed showing that these people were the ones that were abtar. And we see today that those people are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destroyed and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam family is still alive till today. And we see the Sayyid family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam still alive. The lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is still alive till today. So the people like Abtar were them lot. Were them who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala cut them off. Finished them. Like this, Aswad bin Mutlib <coughs> would, make, <coughs> would make a mockery of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam na'udhu billah. That whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would try to preach he would whistle and clap and make a loud noise so the people could not hear the message of Rasulullah he was given like this sorry there was Aswad bin Yaghus Aswad bin Abd Yaghus he would go in the streets and when he would meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he would say as a joke, out of mockery, he would say, no revelation today, no wahi today, no message today. And he would make this mockery, na'uzu billah, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished these individuals. Allah punished these individuals. Aswad bin Abdul Muttalib, Aswad bin Muttalib, he died by the Baddu'a 
and got blind by the other Prophet by getting blind right away by making this mockery, he got blind right away and he died in Badr. He got blind right away, straight away he got blind. As for the others who made the mockery of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa na'udhu billah. Once the Prophet sallallahu was making tawaf of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Sayyidina Jibra'il alayhi salatu wa salam had descended. And Jibra'il alayhi salatu wa salam inquired from the Prophet ﷺ on how the Prophet ﷺ is doing. The Prophet ﷺ, after conversing with Sayyidina Jibra'il alayhi salatu was salam, mentioned these certain individuals to Sayyidina Jibra'il alayhi salatu was salam. And when Walid walked past, the Prophet ﷺ pointed to him And said he would make a mockery and say, Why has Allah made you a prophet? He should have made me a prophet. I'm more worthy to be a prophet. And he would make this mockery. Jibra'il alayhi salatu was salam pointed to a, a vein. Pointed to a vein in his foot. And what happened? An arrow accidentally fell and hit him in the foot, causing this vein to bleed, and because of this, he died. Because of this, he died. That vein went straight through his leg, through this vein, causing his death instantly. Then there was Aswad. Aswad would make a mockery of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He walked past. Prophet sallallahu pointed to him and said he would make a mockery of me. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasallam pointed to his eyes. As he sat under a tree and he pointed to his eyes. Suddenly Aswad started screaming and shouting that someone has poked me in my eyes, someone has poked me in my eyes, someone has poked me in my eyes. And in the screams, he was screaming so much that he had become blind in his eyes. And Allah destroyed him in this manner. Then there was Aswad bin Abda Yaghus. Who would make the mockery of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by saying, no revelation today, no revelation, no wahi today. And he would laugh and make a joke of this. He had walked past. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pointed to him and said to him, this is what he would do to me. Jibra'il Alaihi Salatu Wasallam pointed to his head and suddenly his head was filled with warts and blisters. And through the pain of these warts and blisters in his head, he could not bear it and he passed away. In a matter of days. Then there was amongst them, Haris. He was one of those, Nadar bin Haris. Where he would get women to dance and shout and da sing so that people would not hear the message of Rasulullah and these women would sing Billah, things against Rasulullah. He had walked past. And for this mockery of his, the Prophet pointed and said, Jibra'il him, this is what he used to do. Jibra'il pointed to his stomach. Pointed to his stomach and Allah had made it such that suddenly he had so much pains in his stomach that stool started emanating from his mouth, from his nose and from his behind. 
and with this he died with this disgraceful manner with stool exiting from his mouth his nose and his behind and Allah disgraced him in this disgraceful manner then there was As bin Wa'il As bin Wa'il another who was who used to make a mockery of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by calling him Abtar na'awuzu billah Jibra'il alayhi salatu wasallam pointed to his foot pointed the heel of his foot and one day whilst he was walking a thorn went straight through his foot into his main vein killing him instantly this is how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed these individuals who tried to make a mockery of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam those who tried to make a mockery of allah as rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them in a disgraceful manner and allah had avenged rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam during this time those certain individuals had returned to makkah al mukarrama with the three questions they had returned with those three questions and they had come to ask rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in regards to these questions amongst them the first they asked about the people of the cave the people of the cave and thereafter they asked about the soul and lastly they asked about the individual that traveled to the east and to the west and allah gave him a kingdom they had asked these three questions from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said tomorrow i will answer these questions Prophet Sallallahu at the time didn't say inshallah at the time he did not say inshallah the next day had come and now Abu Jahal Utba Shaiba and his boys they have all come and waiting for an answer from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had not received revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as yet so he was unable to answer the question so they made a mockery of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and again they said he did not know this question they did not they did not know the answer for this question and like this a few days had passed eventually jibril alayhi salatu wassalam descends by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the answer to these questions as to what was the answer of these questions inshallah tomorrow in the blessed seera of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make give us the true understanding to what has been said and of the beautiful life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that we understand the great life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sacrifices of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the family of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in so that this deen could reach to us so that this deen could reach to us it is because of their sacrifices that this deen has reached to us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a true understanding to what has been said before i finish a few parting words we have been trying to adopt the blessed sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam throughout this month of ramadan 
Yesterday we heard about the beautiful sunnah of using the miswak, the tooth stick, which also science has proven that it is more better and beneficial than a normal toothbrush. Nonetheless, the sunnah of Rasulullah today is of applying oil to the hair. Is applying oil to the hair. Umm al Mu'mineen, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, narrates that when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa applied oil, he sallallahu alayhi wa would pour the oil in his left hand. He would first apply it to the eyebrows and then to the rest of the head. Then to the rest of the head. Sayyidina Jabir bin Samura radiallahu ta'ala narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would commence applying oil from the front of the head. So he provides from the front of the head, right hand side, then to the left hand side, first your eyebrows as Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha has mentioned, Prophet Hassan would apply it to the eyebrows. And what's the benefit of applying it to the eyebrows? Let's look at the hadith. Sayyiduna Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, Sayyiduna Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala an narrates, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, that whoever applies oil should commence with the eyebrows, as this wards off headaches. So it, wards, it takes away headaches. Subhanallah, look at the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu It wards off headaches. Applying oil on the eyebrows, you take it as a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu it takes away headaches. Also, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi would apply oil to his blessed hair, he would begin by saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Sayyidina Naif Qurayshi radiallahu ta'ala narrates that Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever applies oil and fails to recite Bismillah is joined by 70 devils whilst he remains engaged in applying oil to his head. 70 devils, 70 shaitans accompany this person whilst this person is applying oil on his head. So this is why it's important that when we apply oil, we all apply oil to our hair. So when we apply oil to our hair, apply it in the manner of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we get reward for applying oil on our hair. We get reward for applying oil on our hair and this applying oil also becomes a worship for us. Even though we are fulfilling our own necessity, but we get rewarded because we are following the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we need Bismillah first. Second, we first pour the oil in our left hand, apply some on our eyebrows as this repels and take words of headaches and then start from the front of our head, right side first, then the left side we oil, the right side and then after oiling all our hair. This is the manner of oiling our hair according to the way of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to follow the sunnats of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen